regrets. I'm blessed to say the old me dead and gone away. Hello and welcome. I am Lane, certified life coach and addiction recovery coach that teaches you manifestation so then you can manifest the life of your dreams. If you do want any help with one-on-one coaching services, please check out the link in the bio or the Dropbox below if you are watching this on YouTube. And let's dive in. What's the best way to deal when the opposite is happening? Well, if the opposite is happening, we know that everything is a reflection of your internal world. So if the opposite is happening, we know we gotta go within. There's something within us that we're holding on to that's creating this reflection, right? Because there, there is no lag in the 3D, okay? Yeah, things can naturally unfold. Of course, it's going to be very natural. But the reflection, we have two perceptions. We can either perceive it from the point of view of this is opposite. I don't have what I want. Or the perception of but I know that somehow, some way, I may not be able to understand what's going on right now. But somehow, some way, this is leading me to my manifestation, so the fact that you are in the perception of this is opposite, that tells me we are not in the state of actually having, or else our, our point of view would not be coming from that, right? It wouldn't be noticing, but this is opposite. I'm doing everything. I'm doing all these techniques. I'm being the person, but this is showing up opposite. No, you'd be more from the mindset of, okay, yeah, I see you. I see that it's not the, the stuff that's showing up that is the old story, but... I'm still going to choose to be the version of me that has it and not be distracted by what the 3D is showing. Because the more that we can focus on uh, our internal world and deciding, no, this is who I am now, regardless of what the 3D is showing, it goes away a lot faster because you're no longer giving it power, right? No longer giving it energy. It's like you unplug it from the circuit when you, you take your attention off of it. Again, you can notice, okay, I, I see you. You're out there. I acknowledge that that's old story playing out. That's one quantum possibility, but that's not my reality. And you detach yourself from it. And because you aren't giving yourself or giving it the attention, the power anymore, you're unplugging it. And anything that doesn't have power, what's it do? Shuts off. So it has to, your, your 3D has to change. And the reason why it continues to show up, you continue to have the opposite is because your, your awareness is still on, but it's the opposite. So, when the opposite is happening, again, it's where is our awareness? What is our attention on? What are we giving our power to? What meaning are we giving this? And what's our point of view, right? And everything is from within us. So we can decide in this moment, I'm new self. I don't care. I'm new self. And continuing to return to this new story, return to this new identity. Does that make sense? So that's how I would go about navigating if you quote unquote see the opposite is give it a different meaning. Well, somehow, some way, this is leading me to my end. I don't have to know how. I'm just gonna continue to be a version of me and I know that has to change. I've been watching your videos a lot lately. Awesome, thank you. Hopefully you're, you're gaining a lot of knowledge and inspiration and motivation and you're feeling really good. So that's awesome. <laughs> they calm me down, awesome. I'm glad to hear that because if, if we can come from a more relaxed place and not give in to our 3D circumstances or even give in to, and I'm not saying suppress anything, so, tread carefully with this, right? But um, if you don't give into the emotions of like the lack, the doubt, again, don't suppress anything. If it's there, it's there. But to not hold on to it and grasp it like that's your only truth because it feels so real. If we can let that stuff go and we can calm ourselves recognizing we can change this. Nothing's permanent. This is temporary, our, our 3D of what we're experiencing, even these emotions. Emotions last between the actual physical emotion from the chemical response in your brain actually only lasts three to five seconds. But we continue to perpetuate it because we continue to re-trigger ourselves with the uh, thought of what we experienced. So the emotion continues to, you know, roll on and we continue to feel it. I've heard people say that it's a bridge and it's coming. Exactly. So it's just a point of view, right? So it could be the unfolding, the bridge of incidences. It's looking at it from the point of view of no matter what, I'm still going to get what I want instead of the point of view of it's opposite showing up. Oh my God, I'm probably not doing this right. Is there something I need to tweak? Do I need to clean up my mental diet? And like panicking over it, right? And continuously looking at it and examining it like you're doing something wrong instead of coming from the point of view of somehow, some way, this is leading me to my manifestation. You see the difference in your perception of what state you're coming from? Discover the self-concept that you need to work on a bit.
yeah, so to become to become a new self is just making a decision. This is who I am now. And it really is just that simple. It's not like this. And I've done it. I've done it, right? I've done the work, quote unquote, the work to where I'm diving in. I'm picking apart my subconscious mind. I'm picking apart my belief systems. I'm picking apart my past and trying to revise everything. And really just I'm digging up graves that were already buried trying to make sure that I covered all my bases so then I can actually make a a true transformation in that healing journey for one exhaustive you get burnt out really freaking quickly and you start to not even it's not even a process of loving yourself it becomes a process of a work in process or, or work in progress that's what it becomes you're never whole you're never healed because you're constantly looking for more right So with self-concept, a lot of people get stuck in this hamster wheel of, I got to work on my self-concept. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to shift my identity so then I can get what I want, which is cool and dandy, but they forget the fact that we got to live our life. We can decide, this is who I am now. These are my beliefs. This is how I would be thinking, feeling, and behaving if I had my manifestation. I'm going to go on with my life now because I know it's done. Boom. As simple as that. It's done. All we have to do is decide. And a lot of people are still on the journey of, but I got to, you know, pick apart my self-concept, pick apart who I am. And no, choose the beliefs that you want and decide that you have those beliefs now. Choose the identity that you want and decide you are the version of you now. And it's that simple, right? And you got unlimited options. So say if you were a person that was uh, very shy and introverted before and you want to be somebody that's outgoing, well, decide I'm a very outgoing person. I, I'm an extrovert. I like being around people. It's fun for me. I always have amazing conversation. Start having that self-talk and then naturally your behaviors will begin to match that version of you because now you have a belief, I'm outgoing. People love to be around me, right? So then the behaviors match to where you'll find yourself going out and having more conversation and meeting more people to where they want to go out with you and your, your uh, perception begins to change and your experience begins to change just because you decided, hey, I'm going to be an outgoing person. Wasn't that challenging? I was this before, now I'm this. And continuing to return to this new story, right? So say if you have the doubt or the fear of, ooh, but I'm really shy and when those people don't like me or when if there's awkward silence and when if I can't maintain a conversation and you got all these doubts coming in, right? We're going to, acknowledge them okay that's old story it's coming from a place of um you know the fact that i was shy i didn't know how to do this before i was unconscious and instead of running from it and be like yeah i can't think that i can't think that i'm I'm a new person no instead we're going to look at that that's old story but i'm going to choose right now what an outgoing person thinks like feels like and shows up as and i'm going to do my best internally to be this version of me What would it be like to be out and have conversations? What kind of conversations would I be having? How would I be articulating my words? And contemplating these things in your mind, the more that you're able to contemplate or daydream about this version of you that you are becoming, guess what? You become this version of you because you're entertaining that thought in your mind. I've been trying to manifest, but I don't know how to detach. Well, it's right there in that sentence. I've been trying, trying, trying to manifest. We aren't trying to manifest anything. We are being, we are becoming a new version of us. And you'll notice when you actually begin to shift your state of consciousness, think, feel, be, believe um, the thoughts that you would need to believe in if you were now this version and behave like this version. Once you actually start to contemplate what this version of you is like, you naturally detach. It's not a force myself to let it go. It's a, I feel like I already have it because internally I've given it to myself. I've become the version of me that is perceiving things from the lens of I already have this. And then you naturally begin to detach. You stop trying because you've already got it. You have become the being who has it. Does that make sense? So stop trying to do techniques. Just decide this is who I am now. Contemplate. How would I be thinking, feeling, and showing up if I now had my desire? Well, I wouldn't be trying. I wouldn't be scrolling on TikTok, watching every single video. I wouldn't be um, working with every single coach that I I have seen under the sun. I wouldn't be um, constantly, you know, not that you're doing this, but I'm just giving examples, right? Um, I wouldn't constantly be commenting. I'm trying to do this, but it's not working. 
all of that would be right out the fucking window because you would be living your life knowing that it's yours, right? You'd be off with your friends. You'd be, you know, going to the gym, yoga classes, like having fun, right? It wouldn't feel like work anymore. You, you guys have to remember before we were consciously manifesting, we were unconsciously manifesting and it put no effort. It took no effort for us to con- unconsciously manifest the shit that we didn't want, right? So why, do, why would you think that it would take effort to manifest the shit that we do want? It doesn't. <laughs> How do I get out of lack? Get into the embodiment of the version of you that has it. Start contemplating these things. Daydream about your life now that you have it. That, it's really that simple. What thoughts would you be having? If you were talking to your best friend about how you just obtained your manifestation, what would you be telling that best friend? How would you be expressing it? Right? Go into that narration in your mind. Really simple, guys. It really is that simple. That's how you get out of lack, is continuing to return to that. So say again, if you have the doubts creeping in or any fears, it's facing it. Be like, okay, I get you. You're there because of old programming. You're there because I allowed you to be there. But now I'm new self, so I'm not going to allow it anymore. I can lay you to rest. You're, you're going to be in that old reality. You can be alive and well in that old reality and that old version of me. I'm new self. And I'm going to experience my new experience in this reality. And it's just reminding yourself of that. I have intrusive thoughts. Again, we're not running from these thoughts. They're intrusive because we're, we're naming them as intrusive. But they're, honestly, because we weren't aware before of our thoughts, we just let them do whatever. It's like a f- freaking wild monkey, right? Now we're trying to tame that wild monkey and domesticate it. So now we're becoming aware of, but these thoughts are intrusive and they keep bombarding my mind. Those were your thoughts. Those have been your thoughts. That's how you got in this sticky situation to begin with, is thinking shitty about yourself. Uh, thinking insecure thoughts, thinking the worst possible thing that could happen in your reality. That's how we got in this situation. You're just now realizing, oh shit, my thoughts were actually really out of control. Right? So they're not really that intrusive. They've been there. They feel intrusive because it seems right now that they're going against the grain of what you're working on. But really, they're not. They've been there. So accept them for what they are. All right, your thoughts from old programming, you are from my old belief system. And I'm going to leave you over here in this reality. You could stay. I don't want you no more. You can live your life over here with these thoughts. I'm going to be new self. In that way, you're detaching from them. But you're also reminding yourself, like, that's not who, I'm not my thoughts. I'm so much more than my thoughts. And you're taking your power back. You're becoming in control of your mind. And because you're becoming in control of your mind, your feelings begin to change. So you're no longer fearful of those intrusive thoughts. You are allowing them to be there. You'll notice they stop coming up. Nearly, I, I, I can't say entirely, but they're not intrusive anymore. They're just a passing thought. And you stop giving them power, right? It's like, yeah, you, I notice you, but eh, just think about something else instead. No longer triggers you or scares you. Does that make sense? I don't know what's stopping me. Well, nothing is stopping you. Those words is what's stopping you. That thinking pattern is what's stopping you because that means that you're in the state of there's something stopping me. There's there's a power outside of me that is blocking me. You know what I'm saying? Get throw that away. Allowed to be there in some other reality, not not in yours. Nothing can ever stop you. You get in your own way. Now, I've gotten in my own way. Like, no judges at all. We all do it to ourselves. We're our big, biggest critics. But it's taking a step back, recognizing that's not who I am anymore. I never stop myself, never hold myself back. I'm going to continue to do what I can to be a better version of me and really propel my life in, in directions that, you know, at the moment I can't even comprehend because they're just so amazing. But I know I'm going to achieve them. Going on with that mindset. If you don't know how to assume that you have him, then you're doing this trying to get him. What's an assumption? Well, I assume that, you know, my dog's going to need to go out in a little bit to use the bathroom. Well, that was an easy assumption, right? I just had to contemplate. Common sense says, hey, I have an animal. He probably needs to go use the bathroom soon, right? An assumption isn't hard to create. 
it's returning to that assumption, right? So it's not the assumption part of it. You're having trouble embodying the version of you that could see him differently. And the reason why you can't see that version of him differently is because your perception, your RAS system isn't allowing you, your filter isn't allowing you to see him differently because you aren't in the state or have the self-concept, the identity of the version that even would be deserving or believe that, that she's deserving of him. So if we work on a self-concept and an identity of, of course I'm deserving of him, I know my worth, I know my value, I know that I'm an amazing person and I deserve to be unconditionally loved and treated like a queen, and you start to really embody this self-concept, your filtration system changes, your beliefs change, and then you're able to see him differently, which makes the assumption that you're creating about him, that he can show up this way, he can treat you this way, of course he loves you and wants you, you're going to easily, or a lot more easily, be able to believe that because now your filtration system you have a belief system that says well yeah no i'm loved i'm cherished i'm chosen so of course he's going to do those things for me but it's hard when you're in this state not believing in yourself i mean a low self-worth or low self-concept and, and always being cheated on and abandoned yeah it's hard to see somebody that's not going to do that you know or do those things to you so we have to shift our identity our self-concept right into the version of us that, of course, I'm getting this goddess treatment. Of course, I'm being treated like a queen. Of course, I'm being chosen. Nobody would ever want to leave me. Because then the filtration, you, you will be able to uh, imagine a different version of him. Because now you're more in alignment. Does that make sense? If you're struggling to see SP a different way, again, it comes down to our, our self-concept, our identity. You will be able to see him differently once you are a different version of you. Because what happens is you quantum jump into a reality. And this may seem sci-fi or far-fetched. This is what science has proven and spirituality has always known this, right? But science has put labels on it. But it's where your consciousness, because all possibilities exist. So your consciousness in, say, reality A, where you currently are, where you're struggling to see them differently, where you don't have the best self-concept yet. This is, is reality A. And your consciousness, because it all exists, it's all the same consciousness. There is no separation no matter what reality you are in. Your consciousness, you decide, I don't want this life anymore. I'm going to choose to be a different version of me. And then once you start contemplating what this new identity is of who you are and the life that you want to live, you start to shift, and it's seamless, shift into reality B. And as you continue to return, because first you might be back and forth, back and forth, whatever. But as you begin to return to reality B, it becomes your dominant state of consciousness. It becomes who you are, right? And in this reality, this consciousness has always experienced the best from people, always experienced loving people, right? Because that's the beliefs that this uh, version of you has had. So there is already a reality where your SP has shown up to this version of you, shown up in a loving way, in a kind way, in a respectful way, you know? So it's not that we're changing the version of your SP in reality A. We're getting a whole new version that has always shown up loving you and wanting you and choosing you to this version in reality B. And what we're doing is changing who we are to match that version in reality B. Okay? That's why when, I, when it's said all over, if you desire it, it means you can have it. There's a version of you that already has it. Well, that's why. Because that desire that you have means that there's a version of you that is able to, that has already been able to perceive this reality. Because again, consciousness in multiple realities, multiple possibilities exist. So there's, your, there's already a, a form of your consciousness that is experiencing this. And you're just tuning into a different radio station is what I call it. A different channel. And once you're able to make a clear connection, you are dominantly that version. Then you get those things pushed out. You know what I'm saying? So if you're struggling to see him differently, remind yourself, I'm not, I don't need to see this version differently. I need to change and then I'll experience a different version of him. Does that make sense? So... It's not that SP won't focus on you because everyone is you pushed out. But if we focus on us and the identity of the, the version of us that is prioritized, then they're going to show up prioritizing you because that's who you are. 
right? But when you begin to focus on them and prioritizing them over yourself, then they're going to show up prioritizing them over yourself, right? Because that's where your awareness is on. You're abandoning yourself, so they're going to abandon you. Maybe not physically go off and leave you, but they're going to abandon you for maybe they, the more work has come up. Maybe they got to spend more time with their family, so on and so forth. There's going to be other things over you because that's your attention is on them more than it is on you. You know what I'm saying? My date blocked me. Well, that's okay. That's okay, right? You just have a story that that happens, right? You have a story that you're not chosen. You have a story that you aren't prioritized. Okay, well, let's change that story. What's the identity of the version of you that's confident, that's loved, that's cherished, that's valued, right? Just go into that story. What would that be like if somebody really showed up for you? Every single time you knew that they were going to be there for you. We have to let go of the story of I'm abandoned and people block me and I'm always rejected. We got to let that stuff go and leave that in the old reality and choose to be the version of us that is always chosen, loved, wanted, and so on and so forth. How does that version of you think? She's not on here texting saying my date abandoned me, right? You know, um, or that they blocked me. No, because this version of you, this new version of you, doesn't get rejected. They'd be the stupidest idiot in this world to reject you because you know how valuable I am. You know what I'm saying? You'd have that confidence. So go into that narration in your mind, right? How do you work on your self-concept? I do it through self-talk. You can do any technique, right? I do it through self-talk because that really gets me into the embodiment because I talk to myself a lot in my mind. So it gets me into the embodiment of the version of me that has it. So I kind of talk to myself in the way like I would talk to a friend. Like, dude, we're freaking killing it. Work is going great. I've got so many clients. I'm making so much money. She's so in love with me. She can't get enough of me. You know, things like that. For self-concept, dude, I'm so freaking amazing. Like, oh my God, I can't believe how far I've come. I am just so confident now. Like, I'm just so proud of myself. You know, things like that really boosting myself up. Um, or like I even say things like, I'm, I'm proud of myself, the fact I have let my past go. That I'm no longer the version of me that has gotten rejected, that has gotten blocked, that has been abandoned. I'm the version of me that's prioritized, that's loved, that's constantly pursued. They can get anybody I want and it's a gift for them. I'm, I'm like a present wrapped up in a bow, everything that they've ever wanted. That's who I am. And I'll just have that talk with myself, right? Um, so that's how I go about, uh, self-concept and like a new identity. And I just do this when, when the desire comes to mind, or if I'm not feeling the best or whatnot, I don't do it constantly from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. I live my life in the meantime, you know, but when it comes to mind of, you know, you know, I am, you know, a really good, I check off all the boxes. I am an amazing partner. I know my worth and my value in this world, you know, and just go on. Go on that narration. That's it. Now, if you do any other technique, um, you know, figure out what works best for you. The other thing that I do is daydreaming a lot. And I just made a video about this. I will daydream and contemplate like who I am now. Like now that I'm this confident, secure version of myself, well, how does she walk around in this world? How does she articulate her words? What's her perception like? How does she see other people? You know, how does she talk to other people? How does she come across when she walks in a room? And I start contemplating these things and it's kind of like um, you're building a character on like The Sims, right? You're getting really specific. This version or this Sim character looks like this. This Sim character acts like this. This is their voice. This is the way they come across. These are the kind of partners they attract. You know, and you, you start to actually like create an avatar of who you are. No matter who you were in the past, I'm nothing like the version I was in the past. I don't even speak the same. Actually, my voice isn't even the same. So you can create any, anything, right? So again, it's, it's deciding who you want to be and not taking no for an answer. That's how you do self-concept work. It's not exhausting yourself saying, I am chosen. I am chosen. No, I said I am chosen. You don't do that. You can if it feels good. But I would rather do a explanation of why I'm chosen. Because then logically my mind's going to be like, 
Because if I sat there and said, I am chosen, and it didn't resonate with me, my mind's going to come up with all the ways and the experiences that I've had where I wasn't chosen. So that's not going to change my self-concept, right? Because now I'm focusing more on the old story. So instead, what I do is all the new ways that now I'm chosen. I'm chosen because, I mean, I have a following on TikTok. So that makes me feel chosen because they're out of all the coaches, they're choosing to follow me. I'm chosen, you know, by my clients because out of all the coaches, they're choosing to sign up with me because I'm, I stood out to them. I'm something special to them. You know, with my friends, they choose to hang out with me. Out of all the people in this world, they choose me and they want my attention. You know, so I start to point out all the different ways currently that I am chosen and then elaborate on it. Because then logically, my mind isn't fighting me. Right? So that's how I go about it. I feel like I do better when we are not in contact. That is very common. I have heard that nonstop. I have. And it's, it's a balance, right? So it's really easy. Think about it like this. It is really, really freaking easy when life is going good to be the best version of self, to have clean thinking thoughts, um, you know, when the sun is shining, you're having a good day. Nothing is interrupting that, right? But if something were to, maybe you get cut off in traffic, you get that one little thing that irritates you, right? And instead of choosing, I'm still going to be new self. This isn't going to bother me. Instead of choosing that, we go back into, well, what the hell? How could you do that? Fuck you, asshole. Learn how to drive. Where'd you get your license from? I'm going to anger, right? We go back into the old pattern. The one thing messed up our, our entire day, or at least that moment for a while, because one thing went wrong. So it's not, it's not actually the fact that you, you do better when you're not in contact. It's, it's learning that, okay, this triggered me, but I'm still going to be okay and not allow it to uh, make me emotionally react to the thing, right? Not to suppress anything, but it's like training yourself through practice that, wait, nothing can throw off my day. So SP could be showing up sideways, right? He'd be acting up, but it's still looking at like, okay, he just having one of those days, whatever, but you're not going to ruin my day. I'm still going to feel really good within myself, right? But again, it's easy when the sun's shining and nobody's in your way and you can go right into the store and check out with no interruptions, not being impatient, nothing's triggering you or bothering you. But what fun is that? If you experience a good day every single day, are you really learning, growing, and expanding? No, right? So if SP's in your face and something sideways is happening, think about the expansion that you're, you're achieving in that moment when you can look at it and be like, yeah, I get that you're there. I get that I'm like that, but it ain't going to affect me. You're not going to have control over my thoughts. You're not going to have control over my emotions. I'm not, there's no reason for me to react because this is going to change, right? So yeah, something seemingly negative happened in your 3D. Think about the growth that you just experienced by not allowing your 3D to trigger you. That's why it's easier when nothing's going on in your 3D because you're not getting triggered by anything. So instead of running from the trigger and saying, oh, it's easier when it's not around, it's looking at that trigger and be like, either way, this is easy because I'm so choosing me. Get what I'm saying? Um, should I not think about SP? It's not the fact that you can't think about SP. It's just doing it from the point of view. For one, we should be thinking about ourselves more, right? This is, let's be honest here. People aren't going to like to hear this, but this is a very selfish journey. If everyone is you pushed out, why wouldn't you be selfish and really put the focus on you? Really start to identify as this new version of self, right? Who cares if it's selfish? <laughs> You're going to be, the, not only are you going to be the best version of you, I'm not talking about like a rude selfish, but you're prioritizing yourself. Yeah, that, that would be considered nowadays selfish if you're not people pleasing. Let's be honest, right? So the focus should be on you. And it's not the fact that you can't think about your SP, but what point of view are you thinking about him from? That's all that matters. If you can think about him like, I know that this is all going to work out. I know that he is who I want. And at some way, somehow, I don't care, but I'm going to get what I want. If you could just contemplate that for right now until you can really build yourself up, that's a start. That's a step in the right direction. Can I just do self-concept and affirm I am happily, 
I didn't read the rest of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Happily married. Yeah. Right? If that gets you in the state. Again, it's not the affirmation that's getting us anywhere. It's how does that affirmation actually make you feel? Because affirmations are just new thoughts. Is that a thought you would be thinking if you currently manifested your specific person? If you were married? So if five years down the road and you're married and you've been married for the past five years, is that a thought that you would be thinking? If no, then come up with something that you would be thinking. Right? If it's coming from a place of, I'm going to say this, and if I say this enough times, then uh, it's, it has to happen but you're not like feeling a shift within you when you say it, this is probably not the affirmation for you. It sounds good, it sounds pretty, it sounds direct, but it's not natural, right? So decide what, what is natural. What, what thoughts would you be thinking if, again, you were married and you've been married the past five years? What would you be thinking? And it's that simple. And then going based off of like your, your body and your mind and your feelings are your GPS system. So if it's not making you feel any different, making you feel better, then we should, probably should be shifting, switching it up, right? I like to go more into like describing what the relationship is like or describing what, um, you know, the marriage would be like. I like to play around in my imagination. When I affirm something like I'm happily married, right? That doesn't feel good to me. That feels like a fucking AI telling me I'm happily married. It's not real. That's not genuine. That's not something I'd be thinking, right? I'd be explaining to myself if I was actually married, I'd be explaining to myself like, wow, my wife treats me like gold. Like I am grateful I actually found somebody that loves me for me. Like that's what makes me happy is that I'm with the love of my life. I'm with my soulmate, my life partner, and that we can grow together. We can expand together. Those would be the thoughts I'd be having, right? And describing to myself what the actual, what makes the marriage happy. What would make you happy? That's what I go with. Do you think I can manifest my date and block me? Yes, of course you can. Of course. Decide, right? Don't focus on, I'm going to manifest him on blocking me. No, go straight to, well, I'm never rejected. So of course, if I'm never rejected, they can't, re-block, they can't uh, block me. Then you'll go into the reality where they never blocked you, right? Go into the version of you that I'm so valuable that I'm confident that this dude's going to come back begging for me, crawling for me because I am the most amazing person that they've ever met. However you want to word it, I'm just giving you examples. Fit what words work best for you. But again, play in your imagination and don't sit there and say, do you think I can manifest this? You can manifest anything. Right? As easy as it was for them to press block, it's just as easy for someone to press unblock. Okay? Just saying. Just saying. Kayla's in the house. (laughs) Hey, Kayla, what is up? Uh, Lane, what are your thoughts on healing? Well, I have many different thoughts about healing. Um, so if like we're talking about physical healing, more than possible, right? Just as easy as we get a cut on our finger, our subconscious mind says, hey, we're going to send all of the cells and the resources to that, that cut and we're going to heal it, right? So of course that's possible. If you're talking more of like inner child healing, yeah, of course, because there's a version of you that, that already exists to where your past is different than the past you already experienced. That's why revision works, guys. But there's there's a, a past where you never experienced those things. So if you decide that's the version of you that you are, then you've you've entered into that reality where you're already healed right so those past traumas that you had from the childhood that you first originally experienced right or perceived because that's all memory is is perception and we decide nope that's not my past anymore i'm deciding that i have these beliefs i'm this person i'm this identity you quantum jump into a reality where that version of you Never experience those things because your beliefs are completely different, right? So again, you're healing the inner child, right? Right? Just saying. 
Um, that makes so much sense. That's awesome. You are welcome. That's a, I mean, it sounds really complicated, right, guys? Like, oh, we're quantum jumping and you just choose your reality. Sounds complicated. You go do this technique. You go to embody this version of you. How would this version of you think, feel, and act? And we make it complicated. But really, it's, it's simple, right? We're just playing in our imagination. If we could be anybody in the world, well, how would that person think, feel, and act if they had what I wanted? Boom. You start contemplating it, playing your imagination, and that's really that. That's it. So I'm an actor and I have a dominant thought that I never get auditions. When I do, I don't book it. Okay. Well, dominant thought is just a thought. It's not scary, right? It's only dominant because we're believing it's dominant. So all we got to do is start telling a new story. I always book the auditions that I want. I'm always offered the... Um, acting gigs that I want that pay the most to where it's really going to make me shine as a star where I'm the main character in the movie whatever it is that you're looking for go with that narrative instead of saying but I don't get booked and if it if I um, get an audition then it's not the one that I'm not the one that's chosen really go into the story of what you do want the version of you that's chosen that's a high value actor how does that version of you think it definitely is not, but I don't get booked. I get an audition if I do, if I'm lucky enough, but I don't get booked. That's not the, the narration that goes on in that man's head who gets booked, who is a successful actor, right? Who is chosen. Out of all the other actors in, in the world, you're the one that's chosen. So start taking on the new thinking pattern and, and the new, naturally what would happen is the new feelings would arise within you where you have more confidence to where you're saying the lines perfectly. Like you're going to start taking on this more natural approach of just like who you are now as this amazing actor. And it's not going to feel like work. It's just going to be who you are, right? So tell yourself, I'm chosen for every single fucking gig because that's the version of me that I am. They are blessed for me to be in this movie. You know how many sales I'm going to get them by just my name on the title of being in this movie? I am a high-valued actor in this industry. Everybody wants to work with me. All the big names want to work with me. Because they know I'm amazing at what I do. I know I bring a lot to the table. Go on with that and come back and let me know how it works. Hence why he blocked me because I believe I have a, a huge story about rejection. Which is, that's okay. So just change the story. Okay. In this, this reality, I had a story about rejection. But in my new reality, mm-mm. I'm a queen. I never get rejected. Go on with that story. That is really just that simple. It's detaching from the old version of you. The old things and old experiences. And remind yourself, that's all in the past. It's in the past of the reality I don't want. Now I'm going to create a reality of what I do want. All right, guys, I think I'm going to hop off. Um, yeah, sure, you know, I've got some clients to answer. So I'm going to hop off, relax. As you know, I had an eventful day. So anyways, guys, thank you for being here. You guys had some amazing questions. If you don't know already, I do repost all of these lives on my YouTube channel. So this one will be reposted tomorrow by 5 o'clock uh, EST time. So if you want to go follow me on there, that way you don't miss this. If you did miss the beginning of it, along with past previous lives that I've done are all on there as well. Um, if you do want any help with one-on-one -on -one coaching services, links in the bio. So go check that shit out. And as always, guys, you got this.